In this video, we learn how to use emergency access accounts to prevent getting locked out of Azure AD. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraldos. In this video, we review how to use emergency access or break glass accounts in Azure AD. Then we walk through a demo of configuring an emergency access account and monitoring logins on that account. If you're not currently using emergency access accounts, you really need to watch this. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Want to learn more about Azure AD hybrid identities? How about Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365? Check out my courses on udemy.com. The links are below. And thanks to my channel members, your support is appreciated. Let's start with a real life story that happened to me a few years ago. I managed identities at a company that used Azure AD MFA on all accounts. One day, MFA stopped working. After some scrambling, I decided to log into Azure AD and review my options, possibly disabling MFA. But I couldn't log in because all admin accounts used MFA and MFA was down. Now, logging in and disabling MFA as a workaround is a questionable response, but the point is I didn't even have that option. This is one of those scenarios the emergency access account is designed to prevent. Let's consider a couple other scenarios emergency access is designed to help. Say you only have one global admin and that person leaves the organization or is hit by the bus. I hope they're okay. You'll need to log in to Azure with global admin rights to create a new account. That would be a problem if they're the only ones with the global admin access. Another example is if the organization is federated and there's a problem with the federation. Use the emergency access account to log in and address the issue. What if you use cellular or text-based MFA and there's a cellular network outage? Azure MFA is a very reliable system, but any system can have problems. Something as simple as a broken cell phone can cause login issues. That's why you need an emergency access account. What exactly is an emergency access account? It's a privileged, cloud-native, global admin account used to prevent organizations from getting locked out of their tenant. Emergency access accounts should be cloud-only using the onmicrosoft.com UPN suffix. They should not be synchronized from on-prem or federated. On-prem and federated accounts rely on other systems. We don't want access dependent on other systems. Emergency access accounts should not belong to any one individual in the organization, and it should not be connected to any user's cell phone or hardware token. They may take those with them when they go on vacation or leave the organization. Also, cell phones rely on a cellular network that may fail. The credentials on the account should not expire or be part of any automated cleanup tasks that remove accounts when they're not accessed frequently. If using privileged identity management or PIM, make the global admin role assignment permanent, not just eligible for the global admin role. Microsoft recommends two emergency access accounts, one that uses a different MFA method than other accounts. For example, if the authenticator app is the normal method for MFA in your organization, use a FIDO2 key for the emergency access account. And one emergency access account should be excluded from MFA altogether. Exclude this account from conditional access policies that require MFA. This allows logging in if the Microsoft MFA service has a problem. Some organizations, especially smaller ones, use a single emergency access account with MFA disabled. That's easier to manage and can be leveraged if there are system issues of any type. What I'm saying is, in this one instance, we're going against some standard security best practices by creating an account with elevated privileges that's not enforcing MFA. Because of that, the account should be guarded closely and only used in emergencies. Consider separating the password into two parts and writing them on separate pieces of paper kept in sealed envelopes, then store them in a safe or different safes if possible. You may also consider including the account with a portion of the password. Things get hectic during an outage and a password is no good if no one knows what account it's for. Testing emergency access should be part of your emergency response plan. Test accessing the account to make sure it's available when needed. Once we have the account or the accounts, we need to actively monitor access attempts, monitor both failed and successful access. We want to know if anyone is even trying to log in with that account. How do we monitor login activity on the account? We'll set that up in the demo. To do this, we need to send Azure AD sign-in logs to Azure Monitor. Coming up in the demo, we're going to get started by creating our global admin emergency access account. Then we'll configure our Azure AD sign-in logs to go to Azure Monitor. After that, we'll create an alert rule so we get notified when someone tries to log in with the account. 
In the example coming up, a log analytics account is already in place. You'll need that in place if you want to follow along. Let's get started in the Azure AD portal to set up the account. We'll start with creating the emergency access or break glass account. You can skip this if you already have one, but make sure to get the object ID for the account and exclude it from MFA. Let's go to users. And we'll add a new user. We'll give it a name. I don't want to make it too guessable. Emergency access may be a little bit too obvious. I'll call this one shatter with a number at the end. I'm also going to change it to the onmicrosoft.com domain. We'll give it a display name, emergency access account 30. We'll set the password. Here, you could have one person add the first few characters and a second person finish it, and then record those two halves and save them in a safe place. We have to change the password at the first login, and then we're gonna test the alerts coming up, so we'll need the password for that as well. You can wait until we've configured the account and set the alerts before you create the two-part password. I'll change the password and we want to leave it enabled. We'll go to properties. You can fill out as much as you want for this section. I'll add a name and set the usage location. Go to assignments. From here, we'll add a role. Search for a global admin. and we'll add the role. Go to Review and Crate, and if that all looks good, great. Next, let's find the account and open it. We need the object ID for this account. Copy that and save it for later. We'll need that coming up. We need to test the account, but before we do that, we need to know that MFA won't apply. Speaking of that, let's exclude the account from MFA. Let's go back to Azure AD, Security, Conditional Access, and Policies. Your environment is probably configured differently from mine. The takeaway for this step is to disable MFA on the account. Also, if you don't have P1 or P2 licenses, you won't be able to access Conditional Access Policies and you can't modify the setting. From the policies, go to what if. We're going to select the emergency access account we just created. And now if we scroll down, what if. That tells us that the admin MFA policy will apply and require multi-factor authentication. The whole point of this account is to access Azure AD if MFA isn't working. So let's disable that. We'll go into the policy, go to specific users, select exclude, and here we're going to select a user. We'll select the account we just created and add that. Now save. Now if we run what if again, It took a few seconds, but now it's showing that no policy will apply. That's good, we've excluded the MFA requirement for the account. Test logging in with that account to make sure it works. You may be asked to update the password at the first login. I'm gonna keep going for this example. Next, we'll configure Azure AD to send sign-in logs to Azure Monitor. You may already have this in place. If so, skip ahead and build an alert on the existing Log Analytics workspace. For this example, I have a dedicated Log Analytics workspace. We're gonna go back to Azure AD. Scroll down to Diagnostic Settings. Here, I already have a Diagnostic Settings going to a workspace for Sentinel. Let's look at the settings. It shows sign-in logs are going to the CIR Sentinel workspace. So I could use that for the alerts. I'm gonna configure new settings just for this demonstration. Let's go back to Diagnostic Settings. We'll add settings. We'll give it a name. Emergency access logging for this example. And I'm just gonna select sign in logs. But you could add more if needed. We'll send the log data to Log Analytics Workspace. And we'll select our workspace. 
Save. Now sign in logs are going to the log analytics workspace. Before we move on, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to try to sign in with the account. So I'll open up an incognito window. I'm going to try signing in. And the first time I'm going to enter in an incorrect password. I'll do that a couple times. That's going to show some failure events. And then I'll add the correct password. And because it's the first time I log in, I do have to update the password. And now I'm logged in. I simply did that just to create some events. I'm going to close the incognito window. Next, we'll create the rule that sends an alert when someone attempts to log in with that account. Go to our Log Analytics workspace. Look for alerts under monitoring. And we'll create a new alert rule. For signal name, select custom log search. Next, we need to add a search query. Change the user ID to the ID of your emergency access account. This query is available at my blog. Check for the link below. If you have multiple accounts you want to search for, simply add the or followed by the user ID equals and then the second user ID. Like that, for example. I'm only using one for this example. Let's run the query. If you don't see anything, be sure to log in with the account after configuring diagnostic settings. It won't return anything if there's no login attempts after logging was configured. The events won't show up immediately. It can take a few minutes before they show. For this example, I had to wait about 5-10 minutes. But here it shows the results. We see a couple of errors, and the one without a result description is a success. Now that we know data is getting to the workspace, let's set up the alert. We'll go Continue Editing Alert. Scroll down to Alert Logic. We want to set the operator to greater than. The threshold value is 0. And the frequency is 5 minutes. This runs the query every 5 minutes and triggers when the result is greater than 0. Next, we'll go to Actions. Action Groups tells Log Analytics what to do when the query is triggered. If you have an action group already, you can select that. For this example, we'll create a new action group. Make sure your subscription and resource group are selected and give it a name. Emergency access alert for this example. Go to notifications. Here we'll select email, SMS message, push, voice. From here, we can set up any alert type you'd like. I'm going to select email. And I'll add my email address and OK. Give the notification type a name, emergency access alert. Go to review and create, and create. We created our action group, and we're back at the create and alert rule. Go next to details. We'll set the severity. I'm going to set this to zero critical. We need to give the alert rule a name, emergency access alert for this example. Add a description if you'd like, and go to Tags. Add Tags as needed. Go to Review and Create, and Create. The email address you added will get an email informing them that they're part of the group. Once the alert rule is set up, we'll try to log in again. I'll open an in private window. That way the credentials don't conflict. We'll go to the portal. And we'll try to sign in with that account. And it doesn't have to be a success, but you could test both. That checks every five minutes, so let's give it some time and we'll come back and see what happens. All right, it's been a few minutes, and if we do a refresh, we can see we have an alert that fired. And for this example, the email address I added did get an email message indicating that there was an alert. That is how to create an emergency access or break glass account and set up alerting when somebody tries to use the account. I hope this helps you avoid getting locked out of your Azure AD tenant. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.